Kia ora everybody. Uh, yeah, so my name's, my name's Wongi Wilson. Um, yeah, I've kind of got more, I'm showing a lot more, more recent stuff. I've got more um, commission-based stuff to show you guys as well. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, as I said, my, name, my name's Wongi. Um, my graffiti name is Freak. It, um, I've, I've been writing for years now, 20 years probably. It, um, I first got into graffiti at, at primary school. Um, I had a friend, real close friend, who lived across the street, and he had older brothers and sisters that tagged. So their, their headboards were tags, and it was all gang tags, so that was kind of my first delving into graffiti. And so um, I just really liked the letter forms and everything, so I kind of just got into it from there. Um, from there, I, I met like-minded people who we carried on doing more things similarly. Um, there's two points that really made a big change for me was um, I was looking through a source magazine and at the back of the source magazine they had graffiti and everything and there was a mural um, into the graffiti masters from the Tats crew which was a massive two-story wall it had six pieces three on each side and a massive picture of uh, Bruce Lee in the middle and I remember seeing that and thinking that's amazing I want to be able to do that and so um, after years of developing, I, I met more people like myself and we, able to, we were able to grow and do that type of thing. And then again, after we were already doing that type of thing, um, there was another magazine that I found and it had portraits that the McLean graffiti writers would do. They do a lot of photorealistic stuff. And um, yeah, it, it, was a photos, it was photos of breakdancers and I, and I thought it was just a photo until someone had actually explained it to me. That was, that was a painting, painted with spray can. And so that really blew my mind and that really pushed me to try and push myself in, in that angle. So I guess quite a lot of what I will be showing is photorealistic stuff and more my commission work with a couple of graffiti stuff. But. <clears throat> yeah, so, um, yeah, as I said, I, I try and do a lot of photorealistic stuff, but I, um, I feel like I have my core roots in graf traditional graffiti, so I also try and do a lot more, um, I guess I, I, I do love letter forms and everything, but I really, really resonated with um, characters and specifically cartoon characters from, from my childhood, um, Ninja Turtles, um, yeah, all that type of thing. So Hong Kong Fui, um, all this. So I really, I, I really pushed trying to paint that as well. And so I, I think that kind of helped develop not just myself, but the people we painted with. Like we'd, we were used to just painting pieces on walls and then um, we started doing characters and then the backgrounds behind it and creating whole big productions. And I guess that kind of, because I, ha I had two, I had my mates, Icarus and Decipher, and they're really solid in the, in the letter form. And I was really solid in the character-based stuff. So we kind of just teamed up really well like that. And I guess that helped push me in, into this direction. So um, yeah, this is a, um, a Thai restaurant in town that I've painted in Christchurch. Um, yeah, it, it's a Thai restaurant and it was called Thai Box and the translation from Thai Box into English is literally just Muay Thai. So hence I've got like Thai kickboxes as well as Thai women and, and Thai references. So um, yeah, I definitely try and um, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I've been doing what I do for long enough now that I don't when, when I first started, it was like whenever anybody offered you a job or like, oh, could you do this? It was, yes, yeah, I can do that. You know, it was, it was always used to everything. Where now I've been able to go further from that and I'm able to pick and choose things now. So I get to be able to be more, more picky with what I'm after. So I, I, I definitely try and get things with more photorealistic things like this if I can. <clears throat> um, in that same complex where that restaurant was, um, after the people who were organising the whole, the whole area saw what I'd done in the restaurant, they came and asked me to do some stuff for them as well. And so um, they had a whole bunch of these single panels. But um, I, was, I was lucky enough to try and incorporate multiple single panels into the one image. So um, yeah, as you see here, I've just kind of titled it like it's a giant in a box. And it's just a giant portrait of myself where yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was all good. Like I, I didn't have anybody else to take the photo of, so so it's, that's why it's myself. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But um, it's just like a giant in the box. He's got his the paint the paint hand in the left hand and the mask and everything coming out the top. So um, yeah, it, it's really 
I've been lucky where it's also um, all word of mouth really as well. Like I paint a lot of murals and so a lot of people get to see what I do. And that could be, that's one of the ways where people find my work. They just find a wall and they love what I've done and they see my website on it or my name and they'll find me on that. Sometimes it's Google and other times it's just word of mouth from people seeing my stuff and, or, or knowing someone that's got in their stuff. So, and that's what happened here. So. Yeah, it's, a, it's another um, one I did for them. I, sometimes when people have a general idea, that's, that's the thing with, um, I guess dealing with clients, it gets a bit iffy at times where um, some people have a general idea of what they want, some people have a definitive idea and some people don't have a clue. And so um, I always just try and, even if they've got a quite definitive idea, I still try and manipulate it and twist it into something that I'm wanting to paint type thing, you know, like I think that's a big part of being an artist. Like, weirdly enough though, I just went to have a look at the other day and um, there's, there's, a burg oh, there's like a Korean restaurant coming in here and weirdly enough they put the big vent comes out here, straight up over the wall. Yeah, yeah. Even, even though they've got a good empty space on this other side, they didn't do that. So yeah, yeah, this, this is probably the best photo of that. Yeah, and so um, this is the next three or four photos are from a pool hall that I've just I've just been painting this one in, in Christchurch for the past week or so. Um, he's opening it tonight, actually, I think, the pool hall guy. So, yeah, yeah, and um, he uh, he's the same guy that did the, owns the Thai restaurant, so he let me, he, he really knows what I do, he really likes what I do, and he just lets me really do what I do best. You know, he doesn't really want to put any restrictions on me. Um, the only thing he really showed me was this picture. Uh, it's actually the cover of um, Dust Till Dawn, the movie cover. Yeah, yeah. And so he really, really liked that image and wanted that image on there. And so I, yeah, yeah, I did that. Um, yeah. And so I did four images, main images in this place, and um, a whole bunch of stenciling around the outside type thing. And um, so this is the second image in there. I kind of. They kind of they kind of go in eras almost like um, this one's quite modern so like 2000s. Um, the previous one was kind of more more 60s 70s. Um, that one's kind of like 1930s ish. It's actually a, a famous painting from an, a, a 1930s artist. I, I forget his name. And um, and on the far left you can see the other one. It's more 80s pool table with the whiskey type thing. So. Um, yeah, so that, that's a fair amount of what I do these days. It's just a lot, a lot of portraiture, portraiture, sorry, and um, yeah, commission work type thing. But um, I'm just really lucky to be able. To, I think I'm lucky to be in Christchurch in this situation, where Christchurch um, obviously went through the earthquakes and everything like that, and it was a really conservative city in the first place. So I think that really shook the core of everything. Like um, we were, we paint graffiti, but it was more of a paid hobby at that stage, where I think. After the earthquakes, me and me and my boys, we just went out and just painted all these walls that we could just off our own back, just to give back to our city. It's what it's what we know. It's what we do, and I think that kind of helped push things. Your general public were able to see the actual art form for what it was, and, and building owners were doing the same, and so it kind of just really it built a momentum, and, and it really did. Yeah, it's really been able to push through to beyond just graffiti and tagging all that you know you, you still you still have a lot of people who consider that as that and like I'll have come people coming up and talk to me while I'm doing this and they're like oh I, l I love your tagging type thing and it's all it's, it's just all people don't really get it yet but they're learning slowly I think yeah and so yeah, yeah like I said um with with Christchurch earthquakes etc cetera, etc cetera, um there was a lot of good opportunities that came from that and so this was one of them. This is um, a, a dude we know who, yeah, he, he had a house in the red zone um, and it was being demolished, but he was having big issues with the whole insurance companies and all that, and he just wanted us to come. His original thing was he just wanted a big fuck EQC <laughs> written, written along the front type thing. But um, once he realised who he'd gotten in, he really just let us go for it. He was just another one that was just like, yeah, do your thing. And so this is um, the, the very front of the house where, where me, Icarus, and, and our mate Yikes took it all out. So, 
Yeah, we're, we're, we, we got to paint the whole inside as well, the whole everything of the inside of the house. It was just like a real short-term pop-up gallery type thing. Um, yeah, I got... I got, I got like one of the main bedrooms and so did my mate Icarus and then we did a production in another one and so it was really amazing and it actually became a bit of a, um, it was a bit of a short term pop up gallery and my mate just, the, he just had like a, a gold coin donation for people to come and see and when, and even with that gold, do gold coin donation, that actually, he donated that back to us because me, Icarus and my wife, we, um, run graffiti and street art battles as well, so that helped fund that as well. So um, we're, we're lucky to have a lot of opportunities like that that have come from what we've been through. Yeah, so um, this is more, so this one and the previous one, uh, uh, not commissioned work, it's more just painting for the love of it and doing what I, what I do for the love. And um, yeah, I've got, I've got a big nostalgia thing, so I'm really big on, on old school cartoons and comic books, so I've painted a lot of this type of thing. So I've painted, obviously, Hong Kong Fui, I've done the Cookie Monster, um, a bunch of Kia Bears, uh, Smurfs, just heaps of that type of thing. So, yeah, I think that's just the nostalgia in me. But I, 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 I also resonate it because, with it because it's the whole... It's just like your traditional graffiti, you know, fill in outline, but just giant character base. And giant, giant characters look awesome. So. Yeah, um, I also get to do a lot of private commissions for, for people and, and homes and, and things like this. And so this was a... Um, yeah, it was, it was a family in the city centre and they just wanted... They didn't... Oh, they had a broad idea, but not really. Um, the lady I spoke to had... A photo of these hands and everything, and I and I really like photorealism. I like skin tones, the depth in it, and everything like that. So I really tried to, yeah, I, I tried to push towards that. And she was really happy with some more raw traditional graffiti. So she let me just go crazy in the background with it all. Um, and you can see over top of the the throw ups and tags and everything, there's it's just got white outlines of things, and um, some of those represent certain things for the family. So on the far left you can see um, like mouldy patterns and that was the actual tattoo that the, the father had on his chest and everything. So yeah, yeah. So um, um, that's kind of what I mean with being able to try and just take what you're given and twisting it into something that not only you're going to be happy with but the client's going to be happy with type thing. So um, yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, this is just another commission work that I got. But um, it was for a company called Mint, and they did, um, I think they were like a construction hiring company of some sort. So, um, yeah, even, even with these people, they were, they were happy for me to have a, a big freak piece running through the middle with the thing. And it was just mainly because I actually, I did the design for them, and it had all the construction elements in it. But also this, this big guy on the far left, he was actually, I took that image straight off their website. So... When I was painting it, the boss was cracking up, and he's like, oh, I'm going to tell... I forget his name. But yeah, 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 so um, I think that really helped connect them with it personally, on, on a personal level with things, so, um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, so I'm quite diverse with what I try and do, and I try and do whatever I can, really, I guess. But um, this was a commission I did for... Um, Canterbury University, um, yeah, it's uh, on three sheets of MDF, uh, MDF and um, it kind of goes with like the story of, of just about knowledge around around the university and everything. So I, um, so so on this panel, I've got the the upoko, which is the the head of the taiha, which is all about just you know, the head knowledge and all that type of thing. I've got the hands in the middle. Um, holding the taiha, but it's also just grasping that knowledge, holding on to it and, you know, taking, taking it for where they can. And then it goes off to the left, it kind of transforms into a path, but it's also, in behind all that, it's got heaps of different references from different um, nationalities that, have, that go through the university and everything. So it was kind of something that I was able to try and add elements that they wanted, but also be able to, you know, be really proud of, of painting something like that as well. So, yeah. Um, because I'm a Māori and I did a bit of Taiha Wānanga as well, so it also resonates with me on that sense as well. So, 
Yeah, um, yeah, so this one I painted on the Camp Mandu building in, in Christchurch. Um, it was for Camp Mandu. They were having an opening. Oh, it was. Yeah, so they're releasing artist series t shirts, and they brung. The first artist that they got to do the t shirt design was a girl from Nepal, and they flew her over. And so me and her painted in this lane way. I painted this one and her piece is on another roller door further down. But um, just the whole thing, steamrolling and everything. So I did this and they were, they were really wrapped with what I had done. And they ended up um, offering me the second spot for the Artist Series t-shirts to come out. And um, which was amazing in itself. But um, they, they were like, so we've got two options for payment. We can obviously pay you money. Or the other option is my t-shirt will be, the release of it will be lined up with the 65th anniversary of Sir Edmund Hillary climbing, yeah, yeah, Mount Everest. And so, yeah, they're sending me to Nepal to climb to base camp. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But that's May next year, so I've got plenty of time to practice. And <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But that's just... Yeah, just the, the possibilities and opportunities that can come from what you do is pretty amazing. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah. Yeah, um, as well as opportunities like that, we've had a lot of um, street art festivals in Christchurch, I guess. Um, mainly from, like, this, this, was this, this was the Rise exhibition at the Canterbury Museum. Um, yeah, um, by George and Shannon from the OU organisation. Really, really good people. And um, yeah, they got us in to paint this as well. And um, yeah, so we painted the, me and Icarus, we painted the um, production at the back here. Um, he painted the letter forms and I painted our portraits. Um, yeah, it's weird. It, was, it came out really, really good and I was well amazed with it. Like if, if you can see um, the bro Icarus, is, he's flipping the bird. But being in the museum, we had to pixelate the finger out, just, you know, being PC and all that. Yeah, yeah, and then it's got me pointing my finger at you. I don't know if we were fully planned that to be it, but it kind of sends that message, I guess. So, yeah, yeah. Um, another amazing part with this was the, um, you can see the, the Hella, lay, Hella lay, lay It Up, Tagged Up area on the far left. And that was like a, um, a laneway that kind of was meant to replicate Melbourne laneways type things, except our, our idea was to run it through the years of Christchurch graffiti history. So um, it was, yeah, so we got it and it was a completely blank canvas and we started off with um, slogans and, and, and band names and, and you know, fan, sport fan stuff. And then, um, which is really cool, we got, we got um, the staff to come down and we were like, chuck them a can and we're like, yep, just r write your favorite logo or yep, from your childhood and all that. And they love that stuff. But then um, obviously we were doing it through the history. And so we went through, all the decades and everything. So um, that was kind of the 70s and 80s era. When we got to like the 90s and 2000s, it was just a lot of like us young tags things. So it was all these really, Christchurch as well, it was a big, um, there was a big skinny community back in the day. Like we grew up with a lot of that. So we were also doing SWAT sticker tags in here as well, which was weird for us to be able to do, doing that thing, but we relate to it in, in a Christchurch sense. But um, yeah, some of the staff people were not happy with that at all. Yeah, 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 they came in. and Because it was all compliments, they were really happy with how things are going, and then those things happened, and they weren't too happy with that. And then the 80s came in, and we were just really raw, ugly tags and pieces. Like, we had people coming in and literally copying their piece from the photo from that era. So it looked exactly like it did. And yeah, and so you, you could tell when we hit the 80s and 90s, compliments stopped. They were, they were just like, ugh. We've done the wrong thing here, but as we progress further, they yeah yeah they were back to complimenting us on it. So uh, you can't see it too well, but in the next year at, the, at this um, spectrum spectrum exhibition, me me and Chris had a room. Um, it was a really tiny one, but we just painted the walls with graph, and then we smashed it all out like a galaxy scene, and so it was all just floating. The walls were floating away, and then I painted the portraits of us in there as well, so um, that's the portrait I painted of, of Icarus in the background there. And yeah, yeah, we, we, had, we had it on UV light timing as well, and normal light, so you, when you were in the room, 
it, it would go from normal bright light like this to dark with UV, which we painted, the, the galaxy was all painted with um, UV paint, so that all popped and shined as well. So yeah, it was one of those things where we, we weren't sure if it was going to work. Like it sounded like a great idea at first, but it worked out really well. Yeah, it's another couple of that, so. Yeah, and so the year after that one, there was another Spectrum exhibition and we got a bigger room this time, and it was me, Chris, and Yikes in this one. And we, um, yeah, so we had a massive squash room and we totally just turned a, the whole place into an abandoned area. And so, um, yeah, we've, all these walls are fake built, um, the power poles are all fake, fakely installed and everything, and we had our, um, aged it and, and, and weathered it all, the, the pile of bird crap and everything, I, I fully handcrafted myself. Like, yeah, yeah. And I say have handcrafted because it was amazing. Like, you can't see it here, but there's, there's a pile about yay big. And, and if you've ever been in abandoned buildings, a lot of these graffiti writers would know about it. These piles as big as this table is type thing. So um, yeah, that, that was really amazing touch for me. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and this is just the other side of the area. So, um, yeah, it was it was really amazing. Like we you know, being able to design this as a crew, and then fully get the builders to fully install it all for us, and then we had to come back and age it and and do all that type of stuff to it. So, yeah, like for instance, that door that's not a door, that, and it's not a light. You know, it's like a UV light behind the door. You just have fun on the wall. Mm. So, so it's, it's a fake wall. wall. Yeah. It's just one big empty room, and we designed a whole bunch of little rooms inside it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, they, um, George and them again, or you had another um, exhibition at Spectrum, and I just, I just went along, and they ended up giving me the spot to paint, and so I, um, back to the whole cartoon nostalgic stuff again, um, with a touch of some photorealistic hands if I could in the front, but, um, yeah, I, I still, and I think I always will do, resonate with that cartoon fun stuff like the 80s thing here, a bit more modern there, some anime stuff on this side as well, so, yeah. Yeah, um, this is, oh, it was panels I painted in New Brighton, so it's a beach suburb in, in Christchurch, um, and that, that was painted just a couple of weeks ago, they had a just a small festival for a wee laneway that they were trying to do up down there. So, um, yeah, it was really amazing to be able to go along and paint that type of thing. Once again, they just gave me free reign and everything, but um, I really just wanted to try and paint something photorealistic if I could again. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got, yeah, fa last final two images I've got here, and these are from, um, we also, at the Spectrum exhibitions, George and Shannon had eight giant spray can which they've now donated to Christchurch City and so um, there's a, a youth park area which we're um, me, Icarus and my wife are, are kind of the caretakers of the cans for that area and so um, we just had the opening for that just last weekend gone and we had um, so we've got three cans which are semi-permanent cans which will stay painted annually or, or six months to annually and then there's another five cans which we've actually um, are going to be free walls really so that's another thing that quite quite a, quite a few of us here have touched on just the whole um, yeah people wanting to paint but not having anywhere legal to go and do that stuff like we do a lot of workshops and stuff as well and so that tends to be one of the, one of the issues even, and even with the battles like we'll do that type of thing and then they're like so we give we give them all this knowledge we teach them about it and next minute they're like okay so where can we go and paint and it's like, well, you know where, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. So we're lucky enough that um, from George and Shannon, we've just been donated five of these giant spray cans in the city centre. So um, that's all up and running now and open for people to come in. So if anyone's down, come have a jam. But, um, yeah, and so this is what I painted on um, for one of my cans. So, yeah, yeah. And that's just the other side of it. And so we're, yeah, so it's just a giant spray can, pink can, and you can see the hand in it. But um, when you go f to the other side of the can, you can see from the other side, so you see the back pass of the hand. 
And on the op opposite side of this, I did the same thing here, but I did a purple rubber ducky on the other side instead of the yellow one. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So, uh, thank you for your time, everybody. That's, uh,